Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and this week's episode is all about working less to make more. And I just want to paint a picture for you really quick before we get started, because this is my first episode ever time recording a podcast episode with a baby strapped to me. (laughs) It is nap time and he naps best when he is on top of me. So I have a carrier, he's in the carrier, and I am in our closet with the mic propped up against a bunch of his baby things and my computer sitting on top of the laundry hamper and I'm sitting on a little stool with a baby attached to me. (laughs) He is sound asleep. Luckily, noises don't bother him and we're going to attempt to do this. This is my first attempt at a podcast work mom life balance integration type things. This is kind of exciting for me. (laughs) So yeah, this episode is all about my newfound inspiration for, uh, you might hear little baby noises in the background, (laughs) Uh, my newfound inspiration for now that I have a son, a very young one. He is two and a half months old already, and I want to spend more time with him. And I don't want to work my life away like I had been. And because in the past, my motivation was to work and, you know, get the things like the studio and the house and the car and all the things. And I worked really hard and we got that. And it's great. And the last couple of years was, okay, I know I'm probably going to want to have a baby soon. So I want to work really hard to set everything up so I don't have to work really hard when he comes. And... I always have to take my mind back and remind myself that, oh yeah, that was the goal and now we're here. So you don't have to work all the time. (laughs) So this year, my New Year's resolution is figuring out how to work less and make more while sticking to a quality work-life integration schedule, heavy on the life part, specifically family, specifically baby. And (laughs) so in order to do that, I Oh, quite a while ago, decided that I wasn't going to work seven days a week anymore. I was only going to work five, and it took a while to get there and say no to projects and book them out rather than take everything on in the weekend. And eventually, I led up to only painting four days a week and having one day as an office day. And that is what I'm going to talk you into doing today, because when I finally did that, I was able to take a breath and not feel completely overworked. And that has then now came to, you know, starting with one day a week where I just do office stuff. I'll do, you know, Artist Academy stuff during the day and or just mock-ups during the day every Monday. And then I would paint Tuesday through Friday and some weekends. Like, let's not, not kid ourselves. Sometimes the job needs that. You need to work all weekend in order to make a deadline. You know, it, it happens. But in general, <laughs> I painted about four days a week. And that's what I'm going to promote for you. And I'm going to list off a bunch of different reasons why I think that's a good idea for anybody at any point in your art business. I did it after I was booked out for about a year and I just wore myself out. And I was like, okay, something's got to change. And that's when I finally made the decision. But I really think even in the beginning, I think it's a good idea to just have an office day or one day off a week or something and then be painting the rest of the time. Now, what it looks like for me is is this year, my goal now is to have Monday as my office day and Tuesday as my family day where it's just me and my son and we do whatever we want all day together. I take him to the park or I just we just stay home and we have that bonding time of one day a week where it's just me and him and then I paint three days a week and then we have the weekend to hang out with family and my husband will be home and whatnot. But it's really important to me now that I work for myself. I can do this and I'm constantly reminding myself of this because it's very easy for me to take on everything and make money, especially because... I'm making over $100 an hour now, and it's very hard saying no to that. 
<laughs> but I'm constantly saying, no, no, like life is important. And this is a goal that I have for myself for the year is I want to take at least one day a week to just spend quality time. And that came, I have a friend who did that. She would take her daughter out and they would go do stuff, just them two. They would go bowling or they would go, you know, go do something new out into the world. Not so not staying home with them, but she would go take them out to, I don't know, the movie or just do something. It was like a, a mother daughter day and they would do that every single week. Or most weeks. And I thought, wow, that is really cool because who does that in working America? I think it's not as well known as maybe other parts of the world. I think in the United States, we just work ourselves away and we're productive all the time. And that's great. But I want to flip the script a little bit and focus a little bit on family. Anyway, okay, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, but how, how does this pertain to me? How how can I make this happen? And before, before we get into the reasons behind this, I want to think logically and let's put some numbers into this because this is what I did. I was like, okay, how much do I want to make a year? So how much do I need to make a week? How much do I need to make a day? It's not going to be the exact same every single week, right? It's going to vary. But in general, my ideal week is right now I charge a little over $1,000 a day, typically. So we'll just say it's $1,000 a day to paint. And again, that's very hard to give up. I'm literally saying, no, I want to spend that day with my son. I don't want to make an extra $1,000 a week, (laughs) $4,000 a month. (laughs) It's hard to say no to But I am. And so whenever you're thinking of this too, think of how much you need to make and how much you're saying no to and just say, no, no, my sanity is worth it. This is what we're going to try. But anyway, so for me to paint three days a week at $1,000 a week, that's $12,000 a month, which is $144,000 per year. I think that's enough. (laughs) If we're thinking about how much we need to live and have a quality life, that is more than enough. However, I'm going to take that $3,000 a week, 12K a month, and be a little bit more realistic. I'm going to take two vacation months this year. So two months where I am not working, and that's probably broken up into a week there, two weeks here, I have three weeks there, maybe. That's probably the most that I'll do. And so to do For 10 months at $12,000 a month, do the math, $120,000 for the year. So that's, I'm working three days a week for 10 months, two vacation months. And that's because I'm a muralist and I can. I get paid the big bucks to paint big things. And this, our introduction to this episode and and every episode on the podcast is to live a life of creativity and financial freedom. That is literally what I'm doing. And I'm so passionate about it that I need to share it with everyone because this life is so much better than I could have ever imagined. And I need you to experience it too, because you can too. And we're going to talk about, you know, how and all the things. But anyway, so say you're not quite there yet. You're like, good for you, Andrea. You're charging great amount. Great. I'm just starting out. (laughs) Okay. For you, I would say a good amount to strive to for an artist in the beginning. Let's say it's $500 a day. And that might be a little bit more than you're making now. It might be a little less, but we're just going to use the $500 a day. And for good math's sake, we're going to go that. So say you are going to be working four days a week at $500 a day. So you're taking one day off a week for family or an office day or to do whatever you want. And let's just say you're taking one month of vacation this year. So a little bit less than what I'm doing, but again, you're just starting out or maybe you're a year into it or maybe two and you're going to make $500 a day, four days a week, one month vacation. That is $96,000 by the end of the year. That's enough, right? (laughs) That's enough. And you know how it is. Like it's not every week is going to go exactly like that. There's going to be some weeks where you're going to need to work on the weekend and, you know, you're going to not be able to abide by your four day a week rule. And that's okay because round up, you're making a hundred K. So that's where we all want to be, right? Or that that's that's the original goal. That was my original goal. I was like, I want to make a hundred K a year. I want to do this. And then whatever happens after that is kind of frivolous. 
So here's a couple of reasons why I think you should do this. And I really want to talk you into it. <laughs> Reason number one is because we can. That's it. It's because we make our own rules and we can choose to take on projects or not, or not. <laughs> and we work for ourselves. And I think that's one of the biggest perks that I experience in working for myself is to make my own schedule, set my own rules. We can do this and we're our own boss. And I think the number one reason that here is just, just because I can, <laughs> just, just because. <laughs> And reason number two is by taking that one day a week and not filling it full, it leaves room for spillover. This actually just came up in the academy here recently. I have a student, her name is Jessa, and she is diving into full-time artistry work. <laughs> and she is taking on a bunch of new customers and commissions and she's really doing it. And she was a little worried. She posted in the academy. She says, look, I'm taking all this on. I want to, what's your tips for work-life balance? And she was just asking everybody. And the first thing I thought of was my biggest advice that I can give you, somebody who's just getting busy and, but doesn't want to be busy or crazy busy anyway, is to book yourself four days a week because that one extra day that you're giving yourself is going to be spillover for the time that you undercalculated how long this mural is going to take. Or you're right on with how long it would take, but the customer comes in last minute and says, hey, can you add a little bit of this? How many times have we done a commission where the customer has said, hey, can you do this too? By the way, I need it done right now. <laughs> and you want to please the customer by having that one extra day of spillover. That gives us room to say, yes, I can do that for you. Instead of, oh man, I don't know. Like I'm really going to, well, I, I don't know if I'll have time. It's just, or losing sleep or whatever it is, or you know, taking away from family time. Having that one extra day is saying yes without the guilt. Okay, so that's all, reason number two is spillover because it's going to happen. And it took me way too long to realize that. Every time I would get a mural job, I would be like, okay, that's going to take me three days. No problem. And it would take me right up to three days because I was hurrying to get it done. But if I knew I had that extra day, I could come back the next day and finish it up and then take really quality photos afterwards because I'm not super tired by the end of the day. And this has happened more than once. I have had, let's say, eight hours left to do a job and I spend about four hours left of the day to do it. And by then it's like 7 p.m. and like, okay, I could stay till midnight. 11 p.m., whatever. I could stay until after dark, or I could come back the next day refreshed and ready to go. And it's an extra trip and it's an extra half of a day, but just spending that extra half of a day to make things just put the finishing touches on it and then set my tripod up, take some finishing videos, take some photos, do the thing. And it just turns out so much better. And then you have time to post on social media. If that's something you find that you just don't have time for, use that as your extra day where you're not painting, where somebody else isn't asking something of you. Take that and take all of the photos and all of the videos that you've taken from the week before and use that one day as the day where we create content on social media because it really doesn't take that long, but having a clear head to do it and to have fun with the music choices and make a reel that's trending and just having that little bit of extra time can really go a long way. Reason number three kind of spills into what I was just saying, but it's good for the soul to reset, refresh, and then jumpstart that creativity. I will say, as I'm staying home with my baby boy, his name is Sky, by the way. I don't know if I've said that yet, but his name is Sky. <laughs> but staying home with him, I haven't been painting as much. And man, my creativity in my head is going, I could do this or I could, oh, I could do that. And I'm doing little things here and there. It's actually a lot harder for me to paint than it is to do computer work, I'm finding. But that's okay because I've been, you know, doing my website and making the academy better and just doing all those things and, you know, tutorials and whatnot or editing them and doing new reels and stuff. Like it's easy to do stuff on my phone and on the computer, but it's it's tougher to paint and get messy with that while he's here. I have to have my husband come home and like, okay, just watch the baby for an hour or two, 
while I go do this real quick. And then that's really how I'm getting most of my painting done so far. But I think it just jumpstarts creativity to not paint for a day or a week, or in my case, a couple months, <laughs> because I have all of these ideas coming out. And I think that'll happen to you too. You know, I think if I was just talking actually to Lissa, who is in the academy, she's already been through it. She's making 100K. She's rocking it. I probably mentioned her several times on this podcast before, but we were messaging and she was saying how she does this. She does one day a week to do the grocery shopping because she is head of the household. She's, I mean, her and her awesome boyfriend and her two sons, like they work together, but she is the breadwinner and she, you know, she is head of household. And so she's got to do all the mom things that come with having two boys and she says that, you know, by the time that, you know, she's using her spillover day to do that and then the rest of the time to paint and then weekends are for family, she's like, my creativity is still like, I'm just wore out. So if you want to do two days a week, if it's going to take that, or maybe just setting time one day a month, two days a month, something like that. I think just having that extra day helps with creativity because life is busy. And so how do you do that, right? You're like, somebody wants something and they're like, oh, you know, I I would like it done as soon as possible. And you know, you have a spot open one month from now and you think that scheduling them ahead a month or two or three, they're going to not work with you, right? Wrong. That's absolutely incorrect. And it took me really just being booked out to realize that. And currently, I am still on maternity leave and I am not taking things right now. (laughs) And I'm booking things for the spring when my baby goes to daycare a couple days a week. And so, but telling people that and even giving them that excuse of saying, no, I can't right now. I'm booking you in spring. They will wait. And it's not just because they, I'm sought after or I'm experienced or whatnot. If you give someone a mock-up, a visual, something that they see and they really want it, first off, they'll pay. And second off, they'll wait. So just test yourself. If you know, you know you're booked up for the next three weeks, but you can put somebody in that four week spot, try putting them in, in week five and seeing. And then if they really balk at it, then charge them a rush fee and then do it sooner. That way you're making more. <laughs> okay. And this extra day that you're doing, you don't have to tell people why or what it is, or nobody has to know that you have an extra day a week to do nothing. You could sit in an empty house in silence. You could go have lunch with a friend. My really good friend here locally, who's also an artist, Samantha, we took a day and we went thrifting and we just went around midweek and kind of felt weird, but it kind of felt weird to just go and do something while everybody else was working. But it also felt really cool because we work for ourselves and we can. So you could do whatever you want to do, but you don't owe anybody an explanation of why you're doing it at all. Tell them it's an office day and then don't specify it it, because it really doesn't matter. Now, other things that you could be doing during this day is catching up on sketches or cleaning your studio or your car, in my case, because as a muralist who (laughs) I work out of my trunk, basically, and there's paint and there's you know, gallons of paint and brushes and all the things in there that just needs organized. And my studio, I don't know, I'm, I feel like I'm hardly ever in the studio lately, but it still seems to get messy. I'm not sure how that happens, but you could spend a day organizing. How cool would that be to start your painting week after you spent a day refreshing and cleaning everything? And so when you go to go to that first job of the week, everything's in order. You know where everything is and it's clean and you feel organized. I'm telling you that it's just, it's hard to put a price on mental clarity in that way. And that's, that's one way you could do it. And one last bit. So artist to artist here. (laughs) One thing that I really like about taking Mondays as my office day, I've been doing this for two years now, I think Monday is office day or maybe longer. It's been a while. And it took me a while to stick to it (laughs) because I would just book people into that slot because I know that I have it open. Nobody else does, but I know. And it took me a while to really stick to it. Like, no, no. So what I would do is put office day in my calendar so that a little mark shows up on that day. So whenever I pull up my calendar and say, when is the next day I can do this? I look for a day without a mark on it, right? In your phone calendar. 
that's just how it works. And I would go and I'd book them in the first day that didn't have a mark on it. And I wouldn't even search for, okay, what do I have the previous week? What do I have next week? I would just go the next empty day that I had and I would schedule it. So tip, put it in your calendar that you're doing something that day. And then when the day comes, sometimes you'll even forget like, oh yeah, I don't have anything planned today. Oh, and you can always take on something too. You know, if you need to make more or whatnot, there's always last minute things that come up that you can easily, easily take, you know, take on extra stuff or do your own stuff or just figure out your print process or update your website. Anyway, so many things. But what I was saying is artist to artist, (laughs) someone who works for themselves to someone who works for themselves, it is really cool waking up on Monday morning and sleeping in a little bit, not having the alarm go off before the sun comes up or right after it does. Although lately, my baby is my alarm, but he's a way cuter alarm than any other that I've had. And so waking up and getting to sleep in and some days I don't even change out of pajamas during Mondays. And it feels really cool to do that because one, on Sunday, I don't get the Sunday blues knowing that, oh my gosh, I got to go to work the next day. I mean, I don't really get that anyway, unless I'm really, really busy. I get a little exhausted from it, but I don't really have that dread of going to work. But resting on Sunday, knowing that I get kind of a rest day the next day where I don't have to get up and rush and go somewhere, it feels really, really cool. So when Monday comes and seeing everybody else on the go, I'm like, no, I'm just chilling because I've set my life up this way and you can too. Okay, that's all I have. And for the next episode, I don't know what the next episode is going to be actually, but I'm going to go on this topic of working less to make more for several episodes exactly. And so we're going to talk more about it and... One extra way that I'm doing that is just charging more. And that's going to be one of the next episodes that's going to come up is just talking about pricing and pricing things up and strategizing on how to make more and make the customer see that you are worthy of that <laughs> and to just get it done and get that uh, the mental block that I have about trying to give everybody a deal and fitting everything into a tight budget. I'm also working on that this year. And so I'm going to do more episodes about that later on. And yeah, okay. So if this has helped you and if you decide this year to take an office day, a me day, a studio day, whatever you're going to call it, and you enjoy it, please let me know. Can you message me and tell me how much that you are enjoying it? Because I like to know that people are listening and (laughs) implementing. And so if you do, please let me know. I'd love to chat. Okay, that's all I have. Hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Also, my baby made it all the way through without making a peep, not waking up. This is great. Okay, that's it. All right, have a great week. (laughs) 